Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Inside Line. I'm Andrew McLean, and this week I'm joined by Matt Campbell. G'day. Now, there's no rest for the car industry after the holidays, and this week we'll bring you all the latest news and wildest concepts from the Detroit Motor Show, which opened today, as well as the latest technologies revealed at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas last week. First, though, let's take a look at two very different scenarios in this week's internet burnout. Well, just goes to show that anything can happen anywhere. Hey, Matt. It sure does. I mean, that slow speed rollover was almost comical in how long it took to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and the in, other... the, in the back of a car park of an apartment block, no yeah, less. Exactly, exactly. But the, the other one is just plain scary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's a rally stage, which is meant to be closed off to the public, and suddenly this guy's shooting down a snow-covered road in the middle of the night, and bang, head on into another car. Well, let's hope both uh, both cars' occupants were okay at the end of it. It looked like that they held up okay, though. Yeah, the lights were still working. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big plus. That's a big plus. And now, on to the Detroit Motor Show, where in typical American fashion, it was all about sports cars and pickup trucks, with hardly a hybrid in sight. So, what's caught your attention so far, Matt? Hard not to be impressed by that Kia GT4 Stinger. The Stinger. <laughs> Stinger. Um, it's a, a quirky name and a great-looking car, you know, a bit of a surprise. No one was really expecting it to look that good, yep. I don't think. We saw the teasers, but, yeah, uh, rear drive, manual, uh, you know, front-engine, two-litre turbo, you know, a good competitive set to play against as well, Toyota 86 yeah. and uh, BRZ, and then up at Cam- Camaro and Mustang levels. So. Yeah, it seems that you know Toyota 86 BRZ has really caught the attention of everyone, and you know there's going to be a lot more of those fun to drive small affordable sports cars coming yeah let's hope it, to ma- it makes it to production absolutely and then there's obviously the toyota ft1 which yep. uh yeah you know, it's, it's it's a long long time coming this car this supra replacement that won't be called super again yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah uh not much given away in terms of detail but what did you think of the look i i'm a bit uh, ambivalent about it I, I really don't like the front of it i think it looks like one of those proboscis monkeys with a big nose on the front <laughs> of it but it's got some great features to it from side view it looks like a ferrari um with a sort of 2000 gt you know sort of top to it um you know some really cool little elements to it but uh you know it would be great to see what it looks like in a final production trim and no doubt that's the you know what their intention to do is yeah i'd say so but uh the other more well more boring vehicles <laughs> i guess um you, we got the the new f-series truck i mean yep. that's that's a huge selling vehicle in the u.s yeah i but, mean ford's biggest selling car yeah and but no likelihood of it making to australia by the sounds of yeah it doesn't sound like it obviously you know production's probably full in that uh, left-hand drive market and uh and, you know, Australia is still taken care of by the Ranger and smaller pickup utes and things like that. I'm sure there'd be a market for bigger <coughs> ones, though. Everyone likes Everyone. bigger is better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there was also, you know, obviously production debuts for M3, M4, Mustang, all the things that we've seen over the last couple of months. So it's, a, you know big sports car kind of show it sure was and i guess uh you know it's we keep saying it and we keep hearing it that uh it looks like the the market's getting its mumbo back and you know the it's the recession's over and the recovery's happening yeah. but it's good to see some you know some concrete models of these new sporty cars yeah absolutely great sign for america exactly yeah well before the world's media descended on a polar frozen detroit some of the world's leading car makers showcased their future technologies at the world's biggest gadget show, the CES in Las Vegas last week. And it seems connectivity is one of the biggest buzzwords in the automotive industry at the moment. Hey, Matt. It sure is. I mean, <laughs> all you've got to do is look at some of the screens and gadgets that they were showing off at this show. Yep. You were there. You, were, you would have seen it firsthand. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's wearable tech like smartwatches, you know, the Pebble Watch here. They're developing apps for that. Hyundai's doing a Google Glass app for its thing. Um, you know, Volvo showed off a, a cloud-based system where it can link into your calendar and the car can literally remind you, you know, when to leave for an appointment, um, it monitors the traffic, it can park, it can pay for your parking. Um, yeah, there was a heap of stuff like that that obviously is going to make the car connected to your world in the future as yeah, well. Yeah, it's going to make the car smarter, but people dumber, probably. Well, <laughs> convenience, I yeah. think the car industry likes to call it. Yeah, well, I like the fact that, you know, there's different tax happening here, you know. Audi's going for just a single screen dashboard, whereas Kia went with three different mega screens, yeah. you know. It's 
so many different approaches to this way of thinking about the future, isn't it? The, the problem is, and you know, the, the, the issue is that driver distraction with all of these things. You know, you can have all of this information and all of this connectivity, but is it going to make driving more of a distraction than um, you know, keeping your eye on the road, basically? Yeah, I guess I guess it'll it'll it will, and it does already, but. Maybe in the future, in you know, ten years' time, when the cars are driving themselves, it won't look so bad. Well, onto that next point, there was some autonomous driving technology showcase there as well, including BMW, which had a car that could even drift itself. How's that? That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, there's an element that, uh, well, I sort of think that's not as much fun to have something yeah. else do it for you, but uh, still impressive. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> the car of the future is going to replace secretaries chauffeurs and now race drivers amazing isn't it <laughs> it's pretty amazing definitely yeah. well that's it for the inside line this week and it's the final episode of inside line for matt too who leaves drive at the end of this week after four and a bit years behind the wheel now best of luck matt in the future and no doubt we'll see you on the road somewhere soon sure will remember for all the latest motoring news and reviews head to drive.com.au